Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Mass key skill video on plotting a cubic graph. Now we're already given the axis and we've got values of x between minus 4 and 3. So let's plot a table of values, we'll choose different values of x and work out the y for each using this equation and then we're going to plot these points on the axis. So let's say our x value starts from minus 3 and then we're also going to work out y when x is minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and then we'll plot each of those points and then look at the shape that we get. Now to work out the y value when x is minus 3, we just need to substitute the minus 3 into this equation. So if I write out the working here, I'm going to do minus 3 cubed, so it's minus 3 cubed, and notice that I'm putting the value in bracket before I cube it to get around bidness because I want to do minus 3 cubed, whereas if I don't have the brackets, it will be minus 3 cubed. So make sure whenever you have a negative number to a power, you always put it in brackets. Then we've got plus 3 times minus 3 squared, so minus 3 squared, and we definitely need the brackets here, and then minus 4 times in brackets minus 3, and then minus 6. So what's the y value going to be here? Well, there's actually a little trick you can do. If you just type in minus 3 equals in your calculator, I can then use the answer key in place of x. So I can do answer key cubed plus 3 answer squared minus 4 answer minus 6. And that gives me a y value of 6. So the y value there is 6. And we'll plot this point later on the grid. Then what about minus 2? Again, I would just substitute minus 2 into this expression, and if you're using a calculator, I can just type in minus 2, making sure there's not an answer symbol there, so minus 2 equals, and then if I actually press the up button, it will then go back to my previous expression where I typed in answer cubed plus 3 answer squared, press equals, and then it gives me 6 again. Then what about minus 1? If I substitute minus 1 into this expression, so minus 1 cubed plus 3 minus 1 squared, etc. I get 0. Now when I sub in 0 into this expression, well this one's a bit easy, you can do it in your head, because 0 cubed is 0, 3 times 0 squared is still 0, minus 4 times 0 is still 0, minus 6, and we get the minus 6. And then if we sub in 1, I just do that manually, y is equal to 1 cubed, which is just 1, plus 3 times 1 squared, which is just 3, minus 4 times 1, which is minus 4, minus 6, and that gives us minus 6, so we get minus 6. And then when x is 2, if I do 2 equals and then sub that in, I get 6 again. When I sub in 3, I get 36. So let's now plot these various values. When x is minus 3, y is 6, so minus 3, 6 is there. When x is minus 2, y is 6, so minus 2, 6. When x is minus 1, we get 0, that's y. When x is 0, we get minus 6. When x is 1, we get minus 6 again. When x is 2, we get 6. And then when x is 3, we get 36, which is way too high. So let's also sub in minus 4, because I just want to see what's happening on the left here. So if I put in minus 4 and sub that into this expression here, I get minus 6 again. So it will be down here. So we get this rather interesting shape indeed. And basically, what cubic graphs usually look like is either some kind of uphill roller coaster shape. So it kind of goes up, then down, and up again. Or it's a downhill roller coaster shape, where we've got two turns in each case. So here, look, our our line sort of swerves right and then eventually it swerves left. Whereas in the second one, it's coming down, it swerves left and then it swerves right. So that's the shape we're going to get. If I sort of join these points up with a smooth curve, because cubics give a smooth curve, this is just approximate and I only have some of the points. I don't know what happens in between. We get something like this. So it's an example of this first kind of curve. And we actually explore that in another video where we look at the shape of different graphs depending on their equation. So a cubic will give this kind of shape. 